Whoa. You can see. Those smelling salts, they're great. I, I recommend it, honestly. Uh, right, we are back, and I am Stanford Chidge, and I am primed! Primed by Mackenzie's smelling salts, I tell you. <laughs> and me and Eto, we are like that, and I will go and score a goal in a minute. Uh, and this is the Chelsea fancast, in case you were wondering. Uh, many do. Uh, now, uh, we are now going to discuss the, uh, the Sunderland uh, debacle in full effect. Now, it's very interesting, I was talking to Dan as I was talking to you in the pub after the match, but I mean, I was, I was full of hate and vitriol and bile for Mike Dean and blaming everything under the sun against him. And then when I went back to the pub and started talking to you lot, I started coming around to the fact that maybe it had a little bit to do with Chelsea. So uh, for the, uh, you know, for, for sense of balance and decorum, I'm going to concentrate on the poor performance of the team first. And then I'm going to hand into Mike Dean. Is that fair? Is that reasonable? Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. All right. Just in case you wonder why I wasn't talking about the way Dean. around there, Mike. No, no. First I'm, I'm, the team. Right. I'm do the team first. Now, <clears throat> you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, you said this, you know, before the break. I mean, you know, with loads and loads. I mean, I think we created more than enough chances to win that game, um, but we wasted them. And I mean, you know, Bar, you know, shinned one over the bar. Ramirez missed an open goal with a header. Oscar, I thought, was quite profligate. And Eto. You know, wasted a few decent chances yeah. that he had as well. You know, um, but I don't think it's just that. And it's this whole kind of I think there's you been know blanket defending. We can't break it down too much. You know, there was a lot of tick attack. You know, sideways passing, Pablo, no direction. I think we've we've had a problem motivating ourselves against smaller teams. You think it's a motivation issue? Well, I mean, I think there's got to be something in that. There's, you do. Because there's, there's, there's a, there's a real slowly. steely determination in the games that you'd expect to... Well, the bigger games, really. There is clearly that determination. They clearly raise their game for the big Liverpool's teams. Liverpool's big thing at the moment is they tend to blow teams away mm. in the first ten minutes. We, That's we, another Benny we, Hill we gag. We <laughs> 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 no, no. I'll let him ponder that one. <laughs> yeah, I got it. It's just, you know, okay. Thank you. I was trying to make a serious point. Now you know, you know what's going to happen. If I'm not happy with the performance, yeah. I'm going to get the smelling salt out. Yeah, yeah rightly so, actually. Okay. Yeah, okay. Have you been on holiday this week? No, I look as if you I have. You're looking a bit tired. Yeah, I've been out with my daughter. Oh, yeah. He's five. You've been on the, the sunbed, yeah. Jonathan. You can tell us. I know yeah. that's the kind no, of thing you actors do. We actors don't, because we get, we might get. Um, it's a bit carcinogenic. Isn't oh, is it, it really? Yeah. You're a bit like that yeah. precious. Yeah, that precious. <laughs> you know, I'm that precious. I do know you're that Why are you saying that? Because I just like it for effect. Yeah. So I felt that for the first ten minutes we dawdled a bit, and it gives an opportunity, and we scored the goal. Looks as if we were going to score three, and then the, the second they scored that, the, uh, the, the Sutherland scored the goal, I thought actually there's going to be a problem here if we don't come back immediately, and we didn't. We, 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 we still do that thing, as you say, of just tipping the tip, ticky tacking the ball around outside. Well, the I got shouted yeah. at for saying that we, we play a bit ticka tackery up, up in the front. I mean, maybe I'm, using, have, maybe I'm using the wrong word, but I, I think there's a, you know, I see it every week, mate, I, you know, particularly when we're playing against a team that will, will defend with 10 men behind the ball. We, we get to the edge of the penalty area, we can't seem to find a way through, so we, okay, we keep possession, which is fair we had, enough. We had 31 shots on goal, and I'd say probably two-thirds of them were inside the box. Yeah. It's like, isn't, that's not the issue. The, the issue right. is a number of different so, things. So, yeah, that's, that's a good point. So it's not, it's not the, 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 the sideways passing, I agree with that. It's the, it's the fact that they can't put it in the back of the net. And I, I mean, I don't think they always make the right decisions with the passes. I don't know. Well, William like... did a classic on that. I mm. mean, I had a good view of this. He was at that beautiful counter-attack. He had Salah running down his right. So he chose the more difficult ball to Eto, yes. who then had the more mm. difficult shot trying to get it in on his he right did. foot. It was too wide. It was too wide. The angle Salah was, too was the wide. ball. You yeah, know? It was completely. Dan, what do you reckon? Are you, I mean, I, sp <coughs> I was asked about this on, on Talk Sport on Saturday night about that Salah ball. And, and the thing is, William, obviously, with that pass, knew what Salah's finishing was like. Um, <clears throat> so that's why he passed it the other way. But I think that it's the thing we've been missing all season, isn't it? It's, it's a finishing ball, mm -hmm. a striker who can put the ball in the back of the net. Jose's been talking about since late summer, let's be honest. Yeah, and, and we we paid for it. It's somebody who gets the goal that like Eto rather than giving Eto an excuse that it was too wide for yeah. him, the, we needed the striker is somebody, the proper striker is somebody who gets the ball at that angle and still Hits the t the target or or sticks it in. You, you know you know what you know what we could say about this Chelsea side though this season, they're not the finished product. Yep, that was a good joke. I mean, being met by tumbleweed. Was that, was I've it, never heard this. Was that to do with sort of something to do with Scandinavian gag? Was finished. It? They're not the finished product. 
Yeah, yeah. To do with finishing. That's right. Oh, right. right. It's, 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 yeah. I'm off. It's, it's clever. It's you know, clever. I, don't know, I don't know why. It's I clever. I really don't. <laughs> it's clever, but... Um, the next person who abuses me gets to have some smelling Excuse salts. me, that wasn't abuse. No, that I was think discussion. We were discussing... Okay. Okay. Listen, I'll tell you what. You know, the other thing, apart from the finishing, which clearly yes. we know, we know hasn't been up, up to standard. Uh, I, I mean, we, we were talking about this earlier on. I, I thought there was a, a bit of a Horlicks on the old goal. I mean, not. I mean, Salah didn't pick up Alonso, which was a, a, a schoolboy well, error. Was and Alonso and the one who had the shot? Baloney, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Baloney. And, then, and then Schwarzer pushed it back into the path, and, and with the, you know, and everyone was a bit slow getting Salah to the ball. Salah made a mistake not place. picking him up. Schwarzer yeah. made a mistake yeah. carrying it back into play, and the defenders made a mistake not b being alive. It was even it. a mistake beforehand. Well, yes, it's the, the last one in the Poyet. Below me was shouting out because I was, despite looking at my newspaper, um, was uh, I was he was shouting out to whoever it was who did the shot. I can't remember the name of the player who, sh who shot to move back to give him the opportunity to, to have the shot on goal, yeah. and nobody paid any attention to it. So this he's completely left at the edge of the penalty area. I've got a very interesting one. My, Paul Paul Crowder's in the house, uh, and we we know and love Paul on Mixer, and he says it's not motivation; it's more can't break down tight defences against teams that come at. Oh, sorry. Uh, can't break down tight defences uh, against teams that come at us. It's easier, which I think. I know that's so what yeah. you said, really. Gen gen genuinely, yeah. But also, I don't know. You can say it's not it's breaking down defences for this game. Other games all season, it clearly has do you know, been. Do you know if you what? have fifteen shots on target, half of them inside the area, then there's something else. But do you know? There? Do you know what really hurt about? So I don't know. I'm sure you felt the same. But what really hurt about Saturday? I mean, with, with all you know, I, I just desperately wanted us to. to I mean, look, let, let's be f fair. I mean, I, I did say this in the pub as well, quite aggressively to anybody who was stupidly enough in my face, that it's not over until it's over. You know, anything can happen in these three games. Anything can happen. But it felt like it was over in the pub afterwards. And what hurt me most was the fact that we can go and beat teams at the top of the table. I mean, I've got this here. I don't know if the boys want to put this graphic up uh, of the top seven. Uh, there you go. Um, but Chelsea are way ahead of that. Um, you know, we won seven, drawn three, lost. Only lost one against teams in the top seven. Man no, City and Liverpool get close, but they've lost three games. Big game Charlie's. Yeah. You know, we are, we are... We don't turn yeah, up. I know. And it really frustrates me because, you know, basically we're not going to win the league probably this year because we can't beat teams like Palace, Villa and Sunderland. And you know what I was saying this year? It's, that's proper old school Chelsea. It reminds me of 1999. I've said it for and years, that kind years of era. years. People don't win the league by beating teams in the top four. People win the league by beating all of the teams, you know. I know. You've got, you've got to beat the teams. Who but are actually, Dan, I think they should change the rules. And I think they should just, a bit like they do in Formula One, really. You know, basically our results against the top seven should be the only ones that contribute and count to the title. Yeah, I, I, why, I think, why don't we have a playoff after the regular season We could season do that ends. too, because we'd win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we would win that, wouldn't yeah. we? You know? Basically, only home wins against Arsenal should. Only home, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Only the goal difference and home wins against Arsenal and should count towards North London title. clubs. Oh, Dan, Dan you're, this is why we have you on, because you, you are a genius. And he didn't even have to have smelling salts to come to that one. Right, now, enough of the performance, uh, the bad performance from Chelsea. It's time to go and absolutely do a hatchet job on Mike Dean, because he's a scouser, apart from... Actually, apparently, he's not. Uh, I got tweeted, of course, as I would. He's from the uh, world. I got, uh, yeah, I got tweeted by a scouser saying, he's not scouse, he's from the world, to which I replied, it's close enough for me. Yeah, fair enough. It's you only know. a ferry right away. It's close enough for me, mate. It's about it's above Watford Gap, you know. It's, They're all no, scouts it's, above Watford Gap. It's more. I mean, it's you. You won't find many people from the Wirral who like football that aren't well, about, or Liverpool it's, or Everton. Do you know fan. what? To be fair to whoever, I don't even know who you were. Not that I'm bothered, but to be fair to them, I, I get the same kind of ire when idiot Northerners call me a Cockney because I'm a Chelsea yeah, fan. Yeah, I know. It's you know, it's, we, it's, it's you know we all thing, know but, that you <laughs> can't be a Cockney unless you were born within the earshot of Bow Bells. And you're not a scouser unless you were born uh, in an area, isn't it? It's a particular. Why are we talking? Who Why? cares? But, but no, the, the, point, the point being, though, it doesn't matter if he's a scouser by uh, like anthropological definition. It's no, not, it's not. It's, I mean, like, you know, but you'll have. You won't, you'll be really struggle to find anyone from the Wirral that follows football that doesn't support either Liverpool or Everton. Yeah, indeed. All right, OK. Now, Mike Dean. Apart from the Tramir fans. First, first to say what I was you about to play on it. Friday so they Pablo? can go to Liverpool you on should, Saturday. Pablo, you should like this. This is going to be quite judicial. Go on. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, exhibit A uh, for the prosecution. Uh, the penalty against Asby. Now, OK, you know, bottom line is, there we go. I mean, where I sit, you can't really see it. But, I, you know, even where I sit at the opposite of the ground, my, my gut feels that's not a penalty. And the fact of the matter is that Aspie slipped to lose the ball originally, yep. head back into the box. And actually, this is a terrible photograph because it doesn't really show you, but actually, I don't know. Actually, it's not too bad. Looks like Basically, Aspie slipped 
And Altidori, or Josie, or whatever you want to call him, put his left leg askance towards Aspie and trod on it. Trod on right, it. Right, right, so yeah. he went down like I, a I, shot. I, have, I, have, I haven't seen it again, so he slipped twice. He slipped originally yeah. to give the ball away, and yeah. he slipped. He slipped there. there. There was a he, lot of slipping sure? going yes, on okay. in the penalty he area. Right, he looked to me he like slipped. he slipped. He slipped. No, he slipped and went down. And, and I, I can't really just, you know, I'm sitting down a table, I can't really show you, but he slid leg, along. instead of like going straight, he put his leg out, and then trod on SB and went A over T. It was ridiculous. I can't see how that was a penalty. There's no really? way on God's earth that was a penalty. And Mike Dean had an absolute he, mare there. But then did. it was. It's, it's and not the, and the was former the only... Liverpool playing linesman was the well, guy here that here the and, and he was straight, straight up with his flag waving, and any referee is more likely than not to go with what the liner says when they have that level of conviction. Can we, like, can we just say something, partly for legal, legal reasons, but also partly for, for sense? I don't think, and I'm sure lots of people will disagree with Mixler, but anyway, I don't think anyone is suggesting Mike Dean went into this game biased. He just had no. a, a terrible, terrible game. A real nightmare of a game. And you have to question the competence of a guy who, who performs so poorly and continues to perform so poorly I, week after week. I, 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 I don't the laws properly, is particularly it, over, over the time-wasting aspect. I, find, I can't understand how we can watch teams deliberately time-wasting and referees do nothing about it. And Foy was exactly the same, as was the, the there was also, what was the other game, the, the West Ham game. There was similar time-wasting and nobody is, is given a yellow card. Um, the, it just carries on and on. There was a bizarre moment in the last few minutes of the game where there was two minutes worth while the free kick and the mm. substitution was taking place. It was actually two minutes long. And they had the guy walk right the yeah, way to well, the touchline and yeah. they changed their minds. Yeah, they changed their minds. The other side and he didn't right. add that on at all. No. He uh, made no uh, effort. Well, so I just don't get this aspect of, of the laws not being applied. Well, well, I mean, he just wanted to get off the pitch. It was, they yeah. were, look, look, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got to move on. But it was awful. It was absolutely awful. Jonathan's absolutely right about that. And I thought Sunderland basically just tried, went out to kick us on him. When we kicked them back, Which is we fine. kicked them back. They fell over and rolled around like they were shot. They time, I mean, the goalkeeper was taking on average eight to ten seconds every Absolutely kick. every time. It was disgraceful and it happens every time and no and referee ever clamps down on it. It was a performance worthy of everything you'd expect out of I don't blame Sunderland for doing that. It, 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 it's yeah, a technique. It I mean, we've used it against Barcelona, yeah, so can, who yeah. are we to, no, to, yeah, to, to judge? Know, yeah. well, well, but just, just on that, Gus Boyes from Uruguay. Anybody of, of, of a well, certain vintage, cheat, don't they? Anyone of a certain vintage will remember the Uruguay team of the the eighties. Yeah, eighty six. Exactly. They just yeah. went out to kick people. And but Terico. Exactly. Mind you, Dan. They worse. kicked Scotland, so that didn't count. It's no problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, we must move on because there are many, many more um, accusations we levelled at Mike Dean. Uh, the the penalty that for a blatant foul on Ramirez. He 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 was shoulder barred like Nat Lofthouse in the penalty box. How could that not be a penalty? Red that was a, penalty. That, a, a, a bla- dreadful a bla- grey area that is in, in the penalty. Well, area, I, I, they, they, anywhere else on the pitch, Jonathan. That no, I agree, free kick. I agree completely. I agree completely. I know, but but they, but they've almost they've almost gone just close their eyes to it. Yeah. Particularly if someone has a shot and then gets taken out afterwards or something like that. Time and time again, that is never ever punished, and we've got away with a few of them. Right. There was also a blatant handball in the box uh, in, in, in the mm. last few minutes. I had a clear view of this because from where I see. To be fair, I don't think Dean did all the lines. But it was still a handball, and it should have been a penalty. What do you do? was rugby tackled on the penalty box. No, I agree, about that. I now, in, in mitigation, hang on a second. In mitigation, uh, he should also have sent off Ramirez for uh, you know forearm smash on Larson. Yep. Although Larson was one of their worst defenders of <coughs> niggly fouls all afternoon. Um, but Dan, um, what do you reckon about? Well, that? Ramirez will almost certainly get a retrospective red card yes. for it. Yeah. Four and I think, games won it at least. Yeah, well, he'll get three games. At least. Well, he has well, to get. He has to get at least four because he he's got a, just had one. Yeah. So, so Would we you get an extra one then? You get yeah, like a bonus, a bonus, second a bonus, bonus yeah, if, if it's his second red card of the season. Is yeah. now a good time to talk about Ramirez? Uh, well, I was going to say, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think he's stupid. I mean, he's, you know, yeah. yet again, he's let. He, I mean, look, frankly, he's letting the team down. He's going. You say he's going to get banned for the rest of the season. Some might say that that's a good thing, but we'll move yeah, but on yes, to that. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about his but, performances. But you know, very poor. It, it, that, that, that's Villa. He gets sent off for, for a nasty, petulant foul. Let's be honest here, and that, and you know. I know. If it was me on the pitch, I know that I would be hitting, punching, kicking people, which is why I'm not a professional footballer. <laughs> he's paid a lot of money and he's let his team down by doing something that stupid on a football pitch. I think Ramirez, he was lucky he wasn't seen. Ramirez has a lot of assets. He runs, he runs, and he runs again. But let's be honest, you, if you had a team in University Challenge... I've got the stats here, Dan. If you had a team in University Challenge, Ramirez wouldn't be on it, really, no. would he? He's, I think he's he is not, a bit, bright, not a bright lad. He's not meant, sir, that's for sure. Well, if you had um, a five-a-side football team, he probably wouldn't, wouldn't be on it either. Hey, Pablo, would you, would you have him in the five-a-side team at Cobham? 
Yes. <laughs> he would, because I'd it's better bear him than Woody. Uh, the World Cup final day as well, if it's going to be warm. Well, that's true. <laughs> I, I just want to reveal, this came out, I think this must be from Sky originally, yeah. but um, apparently, we, uh, when we have Ramirez playing, we win 59% of our matches, and without him, we... Uh, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, we without, win more without, without him, him than we yeah, do with we him. Basically, we win 75% of our matches when Ramirez isn't playing, and only 59% when he is playing, which, you know, I, I mean, clearly he's an absolute first pick for Jose because he runs to around a lot. Pull but. apart your stats, you know, often when we don't have Ramirez, it's in games when we are playing Matic, because Matic isn't allowed to play in some game, European games. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if that skews the stats at all, I've no idea. Oh no, they are weird. I don't like stats as a rule. Sorry, Chadder. I know you're not here, but w I don't. Will he be with us next season? Well, it, I, I just, I mean, you know, you... you, you, you on another day, he would have been, that would have been seen, he would have been sent off, and, and, and that, would have, that could have really cost us. And, you know, he just runs around like a, you know, a red, red card or a yellow card we've, waiting we've, we've been saying all you year know. that he's not technically on the same level as anyone else on that team, and he isn't, and now he's temperament's but, but been... But was he last season? Well. Is it complete, no. in complete deterioration? No, Did he give the ball away so much yeah, last he's season? He's, he's never been technically... Yeah, I've never seen a Brazilian to, footballer with as little technique as Ramirez. Now, it uh, worked really well in the Benitez team where we were sitting back and hitting on the counter-attack because of his pace. It could, worked yeah, really well when, we're, forward, when we've true. got teams that come at us this season, but he cannot play in... Talking, tight games. talking of stupidity or, and, 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 and naughty things happening and, and possibly bans, um, uh, I mean, you know, I'll be honest, when I saw Rui for... I mean, I said to Dan before the show, I said, there's, there's the chidge before, during the match and then there's the chidge after that. During the match when Rui Ferrer was having a go at Mike Dean, I can't even repeat on air what I was saying, but they were very much on the lines of, go on, deck him. That's <coughs> probably about the most polite way I can put it. So. I was right behind him. Now, I, I, I then kind of thought, well, maybe that was a bit silly. But Dan, Dan's got a theory on, on what, what was going on here with the Rui Faria in, incident. Well, I, I don't know. <coughs> it's not based on anything but speculation. But I, I, I was literally right behind him. And, and you could see that at turns he was sort of being pushed by Mourinho, but also he was being dragged back by his hair yeah, by Mourinho, which, hair. Was, which was a bit bizarre, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think and I've said this a number of times, I don't think Jose Mourinho does anything by chance. He gets up in the morning, he decides everything he's going to do. He doesn't I don't think he gets up in the morning, I think he floats. <laughs> Maybe he <laughs> floats. This isn't a man who... He spends presence. all night lying in a coffin. It's a godlike present. This is not a man who goes down to the kitchen and decides, cornflakes, special K, he's got a plan for it. He knows no. why he's not having Not even those, Cocoa Pops. He knows why he's having those cornflakes. <laughs> and I think, I think maybe on a certain level there was a bit of knowledge about why that was happening beforehand. You reckon it was planned then, don't you? You reckon it's deviousness of the highest degree? Uh, I think, I don't think it's actionable to say that he's the most devious manager out there. I don't mind deviousness, I'm devious. No, so no. What, what, was he, what was he achieving by having his second-in-command uh, abused it's in? It's about deflection. Who's talking about the fact that Chelsea play pants? Mm. Well, we should other, other than us. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, uh, you know, just to, to wrap up on this, um, you know, uh, do, do we think it's? Do you think the title's over? You, you were yeah. quite adamant in the pub. Yeah, yeah? Do you totally. Think, do you I think thought it was over? over at Crystal Palace. I do think oh, we'll really? still. I do think we'll beat Liverpool next week, though. Do you think? Do you think the title's over? Yeah, completely. Yeah. Ben Chish, do you think the title's over? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it probably is too, to be honest. But I, I mean, it's really important that we pee on Liverpool's parade. No, I, was, next, but I, but I, just, I don't think City are out of it because yeah. I think City will just—I think they'll squeeze in at the end. Actually, I just wonder. I mean, you know, I think it's really important that a we pee on Liverpool's parade next next Sunday. I think it's really important to lay down a marker and beat them. Right. Give, I also I think, think I think given that our away end is underneath the overhang at Anfield, Liverpool aren't, aren't going to be the ones getting peed on. No, that's you very true. You know how it is when you go up there. Uh, I also think it's very important, in fact, that we win our last three matches because you never know what will happen. And I think we need momentum. What worries me is that Jose Mourinho might now chuck his eggs in the Champions League basket, you know, and say, well, you know, I like to win trophies and this is now my best chance of one. So I'm going to concentrate on that. And it's I, very festive. It's eggs and baskets on Easter Monday. It's a bit, isn't Clever. it? Yeah. You know, what do you reckon? Very quickly, because we've got 10 seconds. I, th I think he will do that, but even if he does, no pressure in that Liverpool game, whatever team goes out will probably win. Mm. OK. Yeah, no, I think, well, you, I think you'll set something up for the Liverpool right. game that will stop them from playing. It okay. depends massively on the first leg in Madrid. All right, yeah. okay, well, which will be tomorrow, so let's hope they pull a rabbit out of the, out the hat for that. Another Easter <laughs> reference. How about that? So I, well, I, I thank you. Right, now we will be back for more Easter festive fun uh, after the break. See you in a second.